Hi guys, this is SDJ RSNF88 speaking with what I believe is the fourth update on the uh, G-Scale Garden Railway project. Now, as you can see from this shot, there has been a lot more progress with the uh, railway. So without further ado, uh, I will take you around to the uh, key points of what has changed and uh, show you them in uh, greater detail. Now, of course, one of the biggest changes since the last update is track. As you can see, progress on laying the track has finally commenced. Starting from the suspension bridge, uh, from the far tower on the right side, on the right bank of the pond, all the way across to down around on top of the embankment here, and then along on the second bridge, which goes over the flower bed here, just along there, and it stops there just before entering the cutting. As that we'll move on to that later on in the update, the cutting itself. If I zoom out, again, or pan back round. Now, the track work is a combination of three brands of track, as mentioned in the first update, I believe. Uh, we have the standard LGB set curves, which are used for the corners there. We then have the German Pico, or Pico, as it's called, P-I-K-O, uh, straights there. Now, those are from uh, a track pack that I recently purchased. Now, I will um, move on to that in a bit more detail in a moment. I'll have a closer look at that. Then we come on round, there's another LGB set curve, and then on the bridges, including the suspension bridge in the background, we have the British Pico, P-E-C-O, uh, SL900 Flexi Track. Now, there is uh, one thing that I must mention, and I will show uh, now. There is a difference between the British Pico Track and the German uh, Pico and LGB Track, uh, where you need special connectors. And if I just pause the camera here, I will show those connectors in a bit closer detail. Right, uh, here we are looking at the join between the embankment section and the uh, second bridge which crosses over the flower bed. Now, before I go any further, to avoid confusion in this segment of the video and from now on, I'm going to be calling the German uh, Pico track Pico. Um, as you will see from the spelling later on in, in, the, in this video, uh, it is very different to the British Pico and uh, some people do call it Pico, but especially for this segment in the video, it's going to cause a lot of confusion if I call it Pico. So anyway, it's going to be called Pico from now on. <laughs> anyway, on the left of the screen, we have the LGB uh, German Pico track and on the right, on the bridge, we have the British Pico track. Now, above the, uh, at the top of the shot there, we have three fish plates. Now, the uh, brass one on the left is the LGB uh, Pico fish plate and on the right is the Pico one and as you can see just from those fish plates there is a substantial size difference between the two rails and ordinarily there will be no way of connecting the British track to the German track but Pico uh, have kev uh, cleverly come up with a special adapter to make their um, flexi track here compatible with uh, the German track now if I just pick it up here you get six of these in a pack and basically these little plastic fish plates and they come a little metal strip that you have to fit yourself and as you can see I fitted this one and at this end uh, which you can see now uh, this slots onto the much larger LGB Pico track and the other end if I could flip it around one handed is the finer scale slot which slots onto the uh, British track now um, when I was asking around on G-Scale uh, Model Rally forums, because I was pretty adamant that I was going to use uh, British Pico Track uh, for a number of reasons. One, it is a lot cheaper. Two, it was flexi. Um, I know you can get German Flexi Track, but it is very, very expensive compared to um, the Pico Flexi Track here. And fr um, three, it's just more readily available um, anyway, in British outlets. And of course, this meant I could use Signals models to supply me with the track. Now, Signals went out of their way and also managed to get me the German Pico uh, track as well, which I cannot thank them enough. So uh, I'll mention that again uh, a bit later on. But anyway, um, so yeah, I was pretty adamant I was going to use the uh, British Pico track. And they did mention about this different scale difference, which I didn't know about originally until after a bit of research. So when I ordered the track, I made sure I ordered one of these adapters. But looking at the adapters, I felt I thought that you know this may cause issues even with these adapters about trains derailing on these sort of larger sort of fish plates and this sort of gap between the tracks. But um, my worries were sort of um, you know I didn't really need to worry really um, as it runs actually really really well. Uh, one thing that I haven't got round well, which I have done and will not be seen in this video sadly or will not be seen in the video is I have tested a train on this uh, section of track um, which has been laid and it runs really really well of course before i went on around you know, 
continuing building the whole loop, I wanted to check that you know this section works. And especially with these two connectors, obviously this one here and one joining onto the suspension bridge, I wanted to make sure our train could cross it uh, without shorting out or without derailing. And it runs really, really well. So hats off to Pico. They've come up with a really, really clever adapter here. I even tried it with some cheap uh, G-Scale coaches that I've managed to get my hands on, which again, I will probably review at a later date. Or if not, I've probably fil already pre-filmed the reviews. I'm not sure what, I'll, what I've done by this stage. You're seeing this video. But um, anyway, uh, I was worried that they were going to derail on this section as well. So I got the loco and pushed them across and there was no hassle uh, whatsoever. So it is, um, you know, it's been a sort of a win-win really. Now an obvious difference between the track as well as the scale is the German track is made with brass, which is very, very durable. And the British track is made with uh, nickel, which is very similar to the same stuff that is used for the Flexi uh, W scale track. Now nickel is very durable out in the garden, but it's nowhere near as durable as the brass track. And one thing that has been mentioned on the G-Scale forums is um, that it doesn't require a lot more cleaning than the uh, brass track. But for the money I saved, and of course using getting to use my local model shop, it was more than worth it to use the uh, British Flexi track. Um, so um, right, I think that about covers the uh, join between the Flexi track. So I'm just going to show you uh, a few, uh, a couple of. Um, just going to show you quickly the uh, German Pico um, uh, starter track pack that I got. So without further ado, we'll take a closer look at that. So uh, here is the uh, track pack in question. As you can see by the top right there, there is the spelling of the German uh, Pico or Pico. Uh, we'll be calling it Pico from now on. But uh, there we go, P-I-K-O. Uh, now this is the station track set, which uh, basically is a, a passing loop. Now uh, if I zoom in down here, we've got an image of what uh, track is contained in the set. Now some of the track, as seen at the sort of the bottom section there, has been used on the embankment as previously seen. Uh, but uh, there are a few other straights that are in there as well to create the passing loop. Uh, and they will be used um, as seen in the next part of the update. Uh, so if, without further ado, I will move on to around the uh, corner and show you where this uh, section, well this, well, this track pack will be used. Well, this is the part of the layout that has changed most dramatically since the last update. Now, for those of you who watched that update, in the background you can see that this was mostly all flower beds and uh, basically all the flowers were still here and uh, so on and so forth. But as you can see, uh, they have all been relocated. Now, um, from the bridge, uh, the bridge uh, you can see on the left of the screen, that is where the in the last update the sort of the, the track bed ended. But now we have this beautiful sort of like rock face which goes along the whole front here. This will hold the track bed in, much like the embankment um, around the other side. Now, the, I like I quite like this section because the front half of the embankment is lower. Uh, so the track sits directly on top of it and then there's the raised rock area as you can see just there behind it. So it gives the effect that the train is working along sort of like a, a rocky pass sort of thing. Now that has obviously got to be filled in with sort of um, you, know, uh, crumb, uh, you know, crushed up stones and stuff like that uh, to provide sort of a packing and make it a nice solid base for the track work. But as you can see we have started adding wooden posts. There's one um, line down that's not been fitted yet and there's one there that is in place. Now that is where precisely where the track is going to sit. It's all been measured out and it's all been levelled. Now as we come on around the track sort of works its way around through the um, cutting here. It goes into a deep cutting and as you can see it's a lot, much substantially wider than the section down here. Now that is where the station passing uh, loop is going to go. Uh, I've seen in the uh, previous clip. Uh, there's going to be the it's got sort of, it's going to sort of curve around, go in there, and then back out onto the straight, which then continues on around in a deep cutting, curves around and onto the suspension bridge. Now uh, those uh, again, there's been a few posts added in there, but all the rocks you see. Uh, all basically reclaimed from what has been dug up uh, in the flower bed. Quite a lot of these uh, rocks were buried because it was sort of a rockery in the first place. And um, many of them have sort of been just tipped on their sides to create this beautiful sort of cutting effect. I mean, I was really pleased how those stones sort of there, uh, how we managed to move them up and just tip them on their edge. And it really does give the effect of a rock face. 
Uh, many of those uh, are already weathered from the amount of years they've been in the garden. They've already got moss on them and it really does look effective. Now along here you can see to the to the right we've got some more rocks that have been laid up on their edges to create a more of a rock face. And then just uh, beyond the rocks there there's actually the concrete path. Now I was worried uh, in previous updates I believe that um, the track was going to have to sit on top of that concrete uh, base uh, which is a path. But luckily the track just squeezes just in front of it and in fact that, tr that, con that concrete there could act as a platform. So that should be interesting to see once the track is down. But as you can see we've got some little posts in there that are cemented which is where the track's going to go. The track then enters a cutting which I'll take a, a bit more of a closer look at in a second. Uh, which leads back on round to the suspension bridge. Now uh, many of the plants were all of course relocated. But a number of them actually stayed in the positions that they were going well, which they originally were. As you can see, we have this plant on top of here. It was worried that that one was going to have to be dug up, but as you can see, it sits perfectly, uh, precisely in the same place where it originally sat. But it was not moved at all. That was, was the rocks were sort of moved up against it, and it now sits on top of the rock face there. There's also a little bush down there. That one's just been trimmed, and uh, basically, um, it's still in the same position it was originally, which is what I was hoping for. And of course, it makes the railway look a lot more natural when complete. Here we are on top of the uh, concrete path now and as you can see there's the uh, bridge crossing the flower bed and there's that uh, sort of cutting embankment that I mentioned and uh, the plants as well. It comes around in the cutting and into what will be the station passing loop there. There will not be a station, I've just, I'm just calling it a station passing loop because of the track pack but it's just going to be a basic passing loop. And then uh, we come on around here which uh, takes us into this deep cutting which then goes on to the suspension bridge. Now, uh, one thing mentioned uh, quite often, I believe, in the previous updates is the level of the track. And when originally planned, there was going to be a slight climb along the front. But um, after digging this down into this sort of cutting effect and avoiding the concrete, uh, we've been doing all the wooden posts. We've basically been doing them one at a time and basically you know, making sure that they're level with a level, with a level gauge. And then um, basically um, you're know, working our way around and adding the next one in and so on and so forth. Now, my grant was pretty adamant that we get the level 100% uh, uh, correct or with, it, um, with um, not very much climb at all, uh, just in case the engines wouldn't be able to make it up the gradient. Uh, but amazingly, after um, checking the level and finally getting around from the suspension bridge on the right to the bridge as seen in the shot now, um, it was actually 100% bang on. There was no level difference at all. I think if any of anything but there might have been just about a quarter of an inch uh, difference which is absolutely amazing. My uh, Grant was absolutely gobsmacked. He couldn't believe that we actually managed to get it 100% bang on so there is actually practically no climb on the track whatsoever. Now as you can see here this is a bit of a tight sort of gap here. Now this plant um, I was worried it was gonna have to be removed uh, but luckily it actually just the track just about fits in front of it as you see it's quite a tr uh, tight squeeze between the concrete path which we're standing on here and the bush itself but amazingly the track just about gets through there and uh, the great thing as mentioned in the previous clip uh, the concrete can actually be used as a platform so there is the potential that I could have sort of like a um, you know, little cameo scene of a, a train pulling up here and make it as if it's a platform which is uh, great indeed but as you can see, there's the cutting there, nicely dug out for the, ready for the passing loop. I reckon I could get a, a loco and two small wagons in there, you know, nothing too substantial, but it should just about fit in there, which is good. And then uh, it comes back on round and uh, onto the suspension bridge. Now the cutting will have to be held back with these special little uh, strips, uh, but we will get onto that hopefully in the next update and sort that out. So um, that's all for now. Uh, do of course check out the RM web post on the uh, project. Uh, a link will be in the description below. Along um, with, um, you know, do check out the SDJR Senf88 Facebook page as I do post uh, images on there as well of how the project is going. I also have posted images of the first uh, train running on the layout. As mentioned, I sadly didn't get around to filming it, but I managed to get a few pictures. So uh, do check out that as well. But uh, that's all for this update and uh, hopefully we'll have a bit more track work done in the next update and uh, hopefully soon I'll be able to get around to filming some actual trains running on the line. So um, without further ado, this has been SDJR Senef88 speaking and uh, thanks for watching.